What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com and today I've got five questions that you guys should always ask um, before you embark on the journey of creating a design uh, for a client. So um, let's just start off jumping right into it. I've got a few slides here that I prepared. So number one is who is it for? Is your assignment to be, you know, are you going to be creating something for a small business? Is it the local flower shop or coffee shop? Or is it, you know, your buddy down the street with his t-shirt business? Or, you know, is it a big business? Is it uh, a company or an organization who you'll be doing the work for? And each one brings different types of challenges. So if you're dealing with a small business, um, you're more likely going to be dealing with, you know, just one person. And sometimes that can be a good thing. Um, but other times it can be a little bit um, hectic because the person running the business is trying to do so many things in addition to um, you know taking care of their project and working with you, the designer. On the other side of it, you have you know the big businesses and the corporations and companies that have you know a lot more employees. It may be easier to get responses and feedback um, in those type of situations. But on the flip side, I will say that um, sometimes it can take longer uh, to get stuff approved because of all the people who are involved in larger companies. Where with a small business, you know, it's just really uh, the owner or whoever is in charge that needs to sign off on whatever kind of work that you're doing for them. So yes, you know, the client is kind of the obvious thing, but uh, there's more to it than that. It's who is the client talking to? Right? So if you're doing an assignment for brand X, right, and you have to think who are they trying to reach and what are they trying to, to say to those people? So now you also have to think of it from the perspective of the client and who they are trying to reach out to. It could be, um, you know, teens, it could be, you know, older folks, it could be married couples. This is really kind of where it gets into, uh, you know, a certain type of demographic or audience that your client wants to tap into. And it's your job to help them do that by using visual communication. All right, and you guys have heard me say that before. So um, this is another example of how uh, you know visual communication and verbal communication become so important. Okay, number two is what? What does it say? Okay, literally, what does it say? And conceptually, like what is the idea communicating, right? So we just talked about trying to communicate to, your, you have to communicate to your client, but your client is trying to communicate to an audience. So what does it say? Okay, sometimes you might not always get copy for a project. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you just have to come up with placeholder type or lorem ipsum or something until you can get that copy. But usually, again, at a larger company, um, they will probably have copywriters who provide you with certain things, whether it's a tagline, a simple title, or it could even be, you know, five pages of copy that you have to figure out how to fit into a layout. And these were all part of the challenges that come with uh, being a creative problem solver. And again, it's, it's up to you, it's up to the designer to try and figure out how this works. So you're dealing with the literal copy, but also conceptually. You know, what does your design say? How does it make people feel? Um, what is the, the underlying message or emotion that you're trying to get across with your work? Number three, where? Where does it live? And what do I mean by that? Well. Does it live online? Is it on the web? Or is it going to be print in what I would call out of home or, you know, just out there in the real world? Um, this is a very important question to ask any client because um, each one, again, comes with its own set of challenges and obstacles. So if you're doing a project um, that's going to live online, chances are you'll have a pretty specific specification or uh, dimensions for something that you have to create. And in addition to that, you know, it's only going to be seen by people who are visiting that site or, uh, you know, the viewers who are there online. On the other side of it, um, when you're dealing with print or an out-of-home campaign, there's a lot more potential, I think, for, for people to see it, but it's only going to be in a local uh, specific area or a local market, depending on where that campaign lives. So... It could be an ad in a magazine, which, depending on the circulation of the magazine, can reach millions of people. It could be a billboard, it could be on the side of a bus or in a subway. And, you know, for those kind of things, it's interesting because that will kind of dictate um, the way that you work, right? So if you're doing 
any kind of print work, you'll know that it's probably going to be CMYK. And if you're doing any kind of web or online work, it's a pretty safe bet that you're always going to be working in RGB mode. So um, that's another important consideration to think about before you really start designing a project. You have to know the limitations and specifications, and you really need as much information as possible. So um, these are just kind of you know questions that as you go, it's kind of a way for you to interview your client. So where does it live, okay? Number four, why? Why does it matter? Now this is a tough question, okay? You have to think about it like this. The client is doing this for a reason. It could be they want to drum up new business, it could be to help them sell a product or promote something, and it could just be, you know, to, to spread a message. But basically, you know, it, it matters to the designer for one because they um, hopefully want to get paid or get some exposure for their work, but they also want to make their clients happy or they should want to make their clients happy because um, ultimately, at the end of the day, guys, it's about delivering what the client wants and doing it in a certain amount of time um, to whatever deadline you, you agree upon. But it's also, you know, just about doing a good job and, and trying to build, you know, a solid reputation by doing good quality work. So you really have to be, you know, a good visual communicator, but also a good listener. As you ask these questions, you have to kind of figure out, okay, well, how can I, how can I address that with, within my work or within my design? All right. And sometimes you might not always agree with the, um, the message or, or the purpose behind, uh, what your client is doing. And that's okay. Sometimes you have to ask yourself, is it worth it? Do I mind, um, you know, or am I okay with not necessarily agreeing with the same message or values or whatever that, that my client is trying to communicate? Maybe, and, and if so, then you know you just kind of do the assignment and, and call it a day. But um, sometimes if you have if you're fortunate enough to have clients lining up out the door and you have other assignments, then you know this might be one of those things where you say, ah, you know it's not really for me, but can kind of depend um, on you and, and what you have going on and whether or not you would decide to take on an assignment or not that you that you may or may not agree with. So you have to ask yourself, you know why does it matter to me and why does it matter to my client? And number five, how? How does it look? Now this is where the actual design comes in, okay? So now that you have this information, you've asked who is it for, what is it, where does it live, why does it matter? Now you're taking all of that information and feedback that you've gotten from your client and you're finally sitting down to, to research and brainstorm and figure out how you're going to solve uh, this problem for the particular client, Brand X or whoever it may be. So how does it look? This is where, you know, it comes in. The hierarchy, the focal points, the colors, and the typefaces that you choose are all going to have a hand in answering these, you know, five questions that we've just asked our client, or four questions, all right? And sometimes the client will have a, an idea of maybe certain colors or typefaces that they like, but then there's also a lot of times where clients are just kind of looking for you to make suggestions or to make an informed decision uh, for them because, you know, in essence, you're the expert, you, you should be the one to to kind of help them figure this out. But this step is important, yes, but it cannot come before any of the other steps. You know, you need this other information before you can move on. So let's just go back through it real quick. We have, you know, question one, who is it for? Big businesses, small businesses, and who are they talking to? Who are they trying to reach out to? What does it say? Do you have copy for it? What does the message say? What does the design say? Um, you know, all these important aspects of the, the communication process. Where does it live? Is it going to be print again, or is it going to be online? And why does it matter? What purpose is it trying to serve? Is it trying to help people? Is it trying to sell something? Um, all very important questions that you need to find answers to before you can get to the how, and how does it look? So. These are just some of the questions that I tend to ask all of my clients and new people who I'm, who I'm coming into to dealing with. And um, it's, it's just about getting as much information as you can before you sit down and really start to, to brainstorm and research. Because remember, guys, it's about working smarter. So in order to do that, you have to be informed and you have to have as much you know, knowledge and experience on the subject before you kind of just jump in. You know, if you have to design a brochure and you don't know anything about brochures or 
the specs or, or anything like that, you know, it's not going to be as effective as if you go out and gather information first. So I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about that because uh, some people um, who I know take on design projects and they're not always sure of what to ask the client, you know, and you don't want to go back and ask your client questions every five minutes. You want to kind of be prepared and, and come to them with all of your questions at the start of a project. So um, for those of you guys who are out there, you know, freelancing or looking to get into uh, the field of graphic design, I hope that this is uh, helpful to you guys. If you did enjoy this video, please comment, give us a thumbs up, and subscribe. And uh, also sign up for our email list, guys, and get the free Essential Photoshop Tutorials Starter Guide ebook. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.